Hey, good morning and welcome. This is Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing. I help VIPs get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie and I bring on really amazing guests to my show. I call this social media pie because I bring on inspiring people. That is the P to inform and educate you. And that's the I and the E, social media pie. Christopher Johnson is on with me here today. Hey, Christopher, how are you doing this morning? Greetings, Brenda. I'm doing wonderful. How about you? I'm doing great. We've, we've had a little bit of pre-show banter, and I'm looking forward to having a great discussion. If you're watching this in live, you can see the topic right above us. We're going to talk about adding a co-host to your live streams on StreamYard. Um, and before we get started, you'll see below us here, I've got another message. So for our viewing audience, if you're seeing us live on LinkedIn, on Facebook, or on YouTube, we would love it if you could drop a comment. That lets us know that the live stream is being picked up. It's kind of like the equivalent of the, the mic tap. Um, or have you used to run track? Um, you, did you ever run track with the baton where they would pass it off? Like the relay races, Christopher, I know you're, a, you're a runner. You know, I didn't start running until I think I was 48. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about? Like in the I relay do. race, we go around I the do. track and the runner number one, as they cross the, the line, runner number two grabs the baton. And that's kind of what happens between StreamYard and LinkedIn. And sometimes StreamYard drops the baton and doesn't tell LinkedIn or LinkedIn doesn't grab the baton. And then the live stream's going and no one's watching. Um, I'm going onto my activity feed right now because I'm not seeing any comments coming up. Oh, there was one comment. Yay. Here we are. Sue. Griffey is watching with us. So we know the live stream is working. Now, one thing I've learned, Christopher, is that um, I don't make mistakes. I have learning experiences. And one of my learning experiences just now was that I didn't have my ticker running properly. Now, you'll notice my ticker running right now, it's going along the bottom, um, running along. And now if I bring on Sue's comment, the ticker keeps on going. So there's a way that you can... Um, tap into a lot of these features inside StreamYard in different ways and in different combinations to make things better. One thing I recently learned about was that I could add in a co-host on StreamYard. And Christopher, you reached out to me and remind me how you heard that I added a co-host. Was it, was it, did I talk about it with Sarah in our VIP call or do you remember where that was? Yes. You and Sarah were actually doing a LinkedIn live. Ah, um, that's what it was. That's about right. recent college grads. Mm -hmm. And it was a, I encourage those who have not seen it to go back and watch it. Um, awesome. Because the information is relevant wherever you are on your journey. It's a reminder to get things done. And one of the things you mentioned was Sarah has been acting as co-host. And I, I did reach out and I said, you know, that is an area that I'm looking to expand my business into. There you go. So let's talk about that. So I know you, we, we go way back to our Toastmaster days. Uh, shout out to Toastmasters, by the way. And um, we've stayed connected, you know, through the pandemic, we reconnected because of the accountability lab that was put on by the one and the only Jan Griffiths. I'll give her a shout out in comments in just a second. And um, you've also been a huge resource asset partner to me in helping to host our Friday VIP Job Seeker Office Hours. I will drop the link in chat for those that are interested. In the meantime, um, I've actually I worked with you as a client. You know, you've you've tapped into me for some LinkedIn coaching back in the past, and um, I've watched you evolve into your business, Calm Clear Communications. Uh, I know what that business is, but I want to give you the opportunity to talk to our audience. Tell us a little bit about what your business is um, as it relates to talking about today's conversation about co-hosting on StreamYards. Well, thank you very much. Calm Clear Communications is a virtual event production company. I help organizations produce virtual events without the stress and chaos that accompanies the tech. So my persona, my demeanor, I'm calm by nature. <laughs> and, you know, calm is contagious. Have you ever gone to an event where everything is chaos backstage? Okay, that's a lot of events. By creating an environment of calm, I allow the speaker, the performer, to just channel and focus what their message is instead of having to expend useless energy. I love it. And it's funny because in our pre-show, Christopher, um, we've done this before. I've, I've interviewed you at least once. I want to say twice on my live show, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's been a few times. 
Um, but you you do your own live stream as well. You host your own StreamYard series. So you're very well versed and experienced. So normally when my guests come on in the pre-show, I walk them through my spiel is what I say. I'll kind of go, I'll say, make sure that our eye is at the same level. We're doing, you know, the lighting is good. The sound is good. We're looking at the camera and I tap my camera. I go through the same thing with everyone. And then I said, well, since we're going to talk about co-hosting on StreamYard, I actually want to show people what you're seeing as a co-host versus um, what I see as a host, I think it's going to help people that are doing live stream events on StreamYard, whether doing LinkedIn Live or YouTube or Facebook um, or other places. I think it'll help them to see what you can see. And then I also want to show folks some of the navigation that's happening behind the scenes. So today, this is a very exciting LinkedIn Live because I'm pulling back the curtain to my StreamYard series. And, and I'm also going to give Christopher the opportunity to show what's behind his curtain just like that wonderful man in the Wizard of Oz. Don't look behind the curtain. Today, we're going to look behind the curtain. Um, and we're, the that reason we're doing mind. this, right? <laughs> the reason we're doing this is I think, um, you know, a lot of, uh, most, most people won't do this. They put on a produced show and, and that's kind of the focus. The topic at hand is the star of the show. For me, sometimes uh, I, I, I take on special guests, which are the little hiccups or mistakes or learning experiences that happen. Um, but today I really want to just pull the curtain back and I'm going to show you all the, the everything on the instrument panel, the lights, the sounds, the smoke, the mirrors. We're going to show you all that stuff that's coming up. So um, first of all, shout out to the folks at StreamYard for adding in this new feature where we can now have a co-host. Now, Christopher, I have the level of StreamYard account that allows me to add in one co-host. So it's like one level up from the free version. And I know there's another level up from there and you can add a couple additional seats on that. Which, which version of StreamYard do you have? Uh, same as you. So I can add a co-host. Um, and hey, there's benefit to adding someone else to help with the backstage or behind the scenes production. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you've heard me say often on my show how I'm piloting and co-piloting. So I'm trying to host you as the guest. I'm trying to speak to the audience. By the way, if you haven't dropped a comment yet, drop a comment because it lets us know you're watching. Otherwise, I can see there's 13 people watching live on LinkedIn right now. I don't know who you are. So if you haven't left a comment yet, please leave a comment. Just say hi, hello, quick thing like that. Um, but part of this is it's it's challenging. It, unless you're a strong multitasker, it's really challenging to keep your co-host engaged to to think about what the co-host or the guest rather just said so that I can have a thoughtful response and then add a question onto it. And then in the meantime, maybe I want to drop your LinkedIn URL up on screen, or maybe I want to show um, a banner or a video or something else in the background. So it's challenging to be able to pay, play co-host and host, you know, at the same time. It reminds me, Christopher, of you know, remember back in the days, there was that little uh, spiel where it was like the guy who was the one man band and he would have the drums and the, th the the cymbals and the bell and the trumpet. And it was like you're doing all this stuff, you know, as as a one man band, uh, one person band. And now on StreamYard, we have the ability to add in a co-host. So let's talk about first of all, you reached out to me. We were in the Was it in the LinkedIn live or did you email me afterwards to ask about the co-host? I emailed you within five minutes <laughs> of that LinkedIn Live. Yeah. And you and I are both StreamYard users. So mm -hmm. first, I want to kind of take a step back into how did I learn about it? And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to StreamYard.com. I'm trying to figure out if I can get to... Yes. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Add to stream right now. Um, and then as I'm going back into here, let me see if I can do this. This is going to be the tricky part. Navigating back to the page where I can see, is this my screen? No, that's your screen. I need to remove your screen. Um, let's see. Can you stop your screen share? Because that Absolutely. was your screen. Now that's interesting. Even if I share, there's only one thing being shared. So whatever has been put into the share outbox, so to speak, is what's coming up on screen. Now, when I click on share and I click on share screen and now it's saying, hey, it's best to do this with two monitors, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click on share my entire screen and then I'm going to click on screen one, which is the screen I am in. OK, so now it's like this. I don't know what this effect is called, where it's like mirror upon mirror upon mirror going through here. Um, what I want to do now is go into See, I don't think it'll let me do this. 
if I click on, can you see my list of upcoming broadcasts right now, Christopher? Absolutely. Okay, good. So I can't see it because I moved into another window, but you can see it. Yeah. So this is how I discovered the StreamYard. Uh, I think it was through an email that they sent out and then mm -hmm. it, it directed you to go into your team settings. So in the, in the left navigation along the bottom, the team settings, and then I think it was someplace down here. Is it members? Ah, this is where it's at. I apologize. So it's at the top of the screen. It says broadcast videos, destinations, members. So when I click on members, um, it's saying right here to celebrate the launch of teams, you can invite one team member. Let me see if I can make this a little bit larger. And by the way, to make my screen larger, what I do, Christopher, is I click on control and plus or control and I mouse up. Um, that's on the PC. I'm not sure what it is on the Mac. But it says to celebrate the launch of Teams, you can invite one team member for free. We're also adding the Teams add-on a significant discount, blah, 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 blah. And I see it has zero seats left. So Brenda Meller is the owner. That's me. And then Christopher Johnson, I've added you in as an admin. Now, before I leave here, I'm just going to show you after we're done today, I will remove you from the team because I'm going to add Sarah back in to that setting. Um, so that's how that's how we go through that process of adding in an additional admin. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to stop my screen share um, and I want to I want you to talk about how did you get access and did you get an email from Stream StreamYard or what happened next? Well, I, I did receive an email from StreamYard saying, hey, you've been added to Brenda Meller's team. And after, you know, being verklempt and, and telling everyone <laughs> I know that I received this prestigious award, right? I clicked accept and I entered a code and then, hey, I was a team member. And then so, when you went to StreamYard, were you in on my stream yard or were you in on your stream yard because you have your own account so how did I de it identify which account to send you to ah all right so when i log into my stream yard mm -hmm. uh, in the member section that you pointed to in the upper left hand side of the screen yep i could switch to uh streams where i'm a team member oh okay and then once i'm on the once i'm you know, under your account, I can see the upcoming streams. And then it's just like being an admin on my own stream yard. I can see what is set up. I can set something up. I can, you know, add in overlays or banners or videos. I can put those things backstage so they are ready. Okay, good. So let's move on to that next because we were talking about this in the pre-show and I started asking you some questions and I said, no, no, no I'm going to wait because I want to ask you these questions live because I want to learn from you, Christopher, but I want our audience to get the opportunity to learn as well. Okay. And I'm hoping there might be folks that are either watching this live or maybe you have team members that are using StreamYard, tag them into comments so they can get access to this playback and watch it later. Because this is a feature, this is one of the newer features of StreamYard that I actually am getting a lot of use out of so far. I'm having my intern, Sarah, help me get things prepped. And now Christopher, when he reached out and I said, yeah, this would be perfect for you because if you're helping people with their live events, you can help them get prepped as well. So we already talked about the process to add in um, a co-host into your admin settings if you have that right level of your StreamYard account. The next thing I want to talk about is what can you do as a co-host for the event? So let's start with, um, so when we come into the stream yard this morning, guys, I you, you probably remember I have an intro video that plays. And the reason I do that is there's a little bit of a lag between when you click on go live to when you're actually live. And it, and it kind of smooths out that awkward, are we live yet? Is this happening? And looking at the camera, looking at it, it, it takes that part out because I know once that 30 second video is done playing, we are live and I don't have to, you know, really tap the mic and check. I want to make sure you guys can hear me, but that helps me. Um, so it's almost like the icing on a cake. It smooths the, the seams of the cake. It's kind of like what the video is there. Now, after the live, the 30 second countdown ticker video stops playing, then you see the background in here. And when we first came on today, um, I know Sarah's watching. So this is this is just a learning experience, Sarah for you and just to make note of for others as well. There's a couple different things that are along the um, right-hand side navigation that you can see as an admin. Um, you cannot see as a guest, I don't believe though, Christopher, right? As a guest, you don't see 
That is correct. You okay. can see the as a guest, you see the private chat. Okay. And the and the comments section. So I think I'm going to start to share my screen again because I okay. think it'll be easier if I tell people what I'm doing as I'm sharing the screen with you. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of that uh, mirroring effect. <laughs> is there a name for that when it goes like screen within screen within screen? You know, there is. And at the moment, it escapes me. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's called. If, you, if you're watching right now, if you know what we're talking about, that screen within screen effect that's happening, drop it in comments. You can help to educate both of us. All right. But at any rate, in the right hand navigation, I have some brand settings that have been set up. Um, and you'll see I have brand one, this for Meller Marketing. Jan White, I'm not sure. I would think I was probably testing it out. It might have been Jan Griffiths even back when she was first starting. Um, or I can create a new brand. So I can actually create multiple brands in here. Um, then I can set my brand color. I've set up my themes as I want to have them in here. I can upload logos inside here. When we first came on today, um, instead of having the white background behind us, what had actually happened is Sarah had had that set up as an overlay. So when we have an overlay, here's what happens. And I don't know if you can, can people hear us when there's an overlay over oh, top sure. of us? They can. So okay. go ahead, throw the overlay up again. Okay. Guests of Social Media Pie will enjoy the finest of pie accoutrements from around this great state. And it's funny because that was something that we had set up a while back when I, not too long after I first started having my show and probably after one of the first times I had you on with me, I said, wouldn't it be funny if at the end, like on the TV shows, they do that at the end, guests of Full House, enjoy, blah, 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 stay at the Twin Seasons Hotel and all these other things. Um, and we were talking in the pre-show, Christopher, about this other thing. There are ways that you can upload a solid background that goes over top and that's called an overlay that's like this right here mm -hmm. and that's what happened when we first came in i clicked on this i'm like oh no why is this not working and then i realized there's this other section if you scroll down below it's called background and the background sits behind us versus the overlay goes on top of us so right now i've removed that background and then we were talking about um you know this other overlay that Streamyard gives you this is a default one from Streamyard. And you'll see at the top above me, it says live with StreamYard. And then in the lower right-hand corner, it says StreamYard live show. And I said, how do they do that? So Christopher, this is something you could help people with, right? Absolutely. Creating one of these. What is what is this and how do you do these things? So I use Canva.com for my overlays. And the size, I believe, is 720 by a 1280. I think you're right. 1280 by 720, something like that. We'll we'll drop it in the comments here in a minute. Double check that. And adding in something at the top or the bottom or wherever you want and making the rest of it transparent allows you to fill it in however you want. Okay. So is that something you could help me with if I needed help with it? Could you create an overlay for me that's not covering the entire screen, but that's like a block at the top and a block at the bottom like Streamer did? Absolutely. Um, one of the terms in TV-ish broadcasting, mm -hmm. uh, lower thirds. So a lower okay. third could be set up so that it has something, a call to action for the audience. Hey, uh, take a photo of this QR code. For more information about any of the topics seen on today's program, log in here. Okay. So speaking of when you said take a photo of this QR code, I'm going to try something else real quick here. And um, if you're just joining us today, guys, we are talking about all of the great features that exist within um, StreamYard, focusing on adding in someone as a co-host. But um, speaking of QR code, one of the things I'm going to start doing at the end of my live stream, if you watch all the way to the end, I do have like a outro video that plays as well. And I just created a new... Um, part of that outro video, which will be a QR code. So I'm going to pull this up on screen and I want to see if this works, if you hold your camera up in front of the screen. So I think I have to put this as a overlay, right? That'll cover the whole screen. Mm -hmm. Let me click on this and add this in right now. And then as soon as it loads, I'm going to show it right now. So this is an example of using an overlay. Um, and I created this using 
I grabbed a screen capture, obviously, of your LinkedIn header. I grabbed uh, your URL, and then I went inside a website called QR Code Monkey. Um, and that's the site that I use to generate the QR codes. I put the LinkedIn logo in the middle of it um, so that you'd know that's where the, the link is directing you. Um, and then I'm going to drop a banner in here real quick in the background. There you go. So that's the website, the QR code monkey. It's a little bit confusing on that background because I've got your website there as well. So now I've shown you what I can do. So let's say, Christopher, um, that I am not as savvy about doing all the co-hosts and hosts. I'm like right now you can tell my brain's getting a little bit fried because I'm trying to do all the things and keep the show moving along. Let's say I don't want to do that. I want to hire someone like you to help me out with that. So can you show us how you can get access to those same features? And keep in mind, this is my StreamYard account. This is not Christopher's StreamYard account, but I've added him as a co-host. So can you demonstrate for us how and show your share your screen as you're doing that, um, how you can add in items into that, that brand section, if you wouldn't mind? Absolutely. So now you're seeing that same similar effect. Mm -hmm. And here's here's another behind the scenes secret that I employ. When I am producing for someone else, I make sure I have, for instance, a tab open that has their LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sharing the screen, all right, great. Uh, now you should be seeing your profile. But what I'm doing behind the scenes is making sure that I have what their profile is so I can bring it up and share that into the comments. Additionally, I also like to have the, I work with a lot of associations and organizations. So I will have the organization's website as one of the places that I have on a tab open to. And I'll get resources from there. Books are a lot of times, or books are something that come up on a regular basis. So I usually have a tab open to Audible and or Amazon. So if a speaker mentions a book title, I can quickly pull it up and then drop that information into the chat. Now, cool. in StreamYard, um, if I'm just backstage and this is your program, I'm making sure because we've met beforehand. All right. I know at this time, Brenda wants me to reference this. So I will have that. Uh, and I'll make sure in a private chat. All right. Is this the link that you want it displayed? And then I'll, after verifying that, I'll make sure that it goes out at the right time. Um, banners. I can add them in if I notice that, oh, this would be a good spot for mm -hmm. this particular banner, then I can add that in. So you have the ability, even though I've shared the QR monkey website thing on there, you have the ability to remove it. I just did a private chat with you as well. And I suggested that you share something. Um, can you show us where the private chat is and tell Absolutely. us what that feature is all about? So the private chat should be right along the side here. And, can you share your website? Well, of course. So I will open another tab. And as you're doing this, I'm just describing. So if you are hosting the event, I know a lot of times as a host, I'm like, oh, they just mentioned this. I want to pull that website up. As the co-host, you're trying to anticipate that so that you can share it up on screen. Um, or the host might say, don't share anything until, unless I private message you. And you could even private message me back and, and you could say, do you want me to share their website? Exactly. Right? And, and I could, I could just, you know, just hit the letter Y saying yes. And then that would, you, you know, you would know to go ahead and share it. So we can kind of communicate without disrupting the show essentially. Right. Exactly. It is part of that creating an atmosphere of calm. So if you're mm -hmm. focused on your guest and on the audience, then that frees you up uh, and I can just pay attention, listen attentively, listen empathetically and be aware of what is being said. Oh, Brenda just mentioned a pie recipe from great, from <laughs> the great pie shop. Okay. Found it. And it magically appears a few seconds after you've mentioned it. 
Mm, very cool. Now, what about um, comments? Can you share comments on screen as well? I saw that Sue Griffey answered my question potentially about the multiple screens and what they might be called. Can you see the comment from Sue yet? I did. And I saw a comment from Regina Carey. <laughs> so, you know, another fabulous Michigan person. And Sue, I will be speaking with on my program this afternoon. Oh, very good. What time is that, Christopher? That is two o'clock. Two o'clock Eastern. Well, we'll be sure to watch it. But I think we can also add it to our calendar if we want to get to the link to the playback too, right? Absolutely. Good. Well, after the show, I'll ask if you could go in and add the link in there. That'd be very helpful. Or Sarah, if you're still watching, if Sarah, you wouldn't mind adding that in, that'd be great. So um, I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to see if the audience has any questions. If you, if you are watching right now live, please drop a comment. If you have any comments about using StreamYard, about live streaming, um, if you're not yet live streaming, if you have questions about getting started or any, any parts of the process, go ahead and ask them now. Um, my area of expertise is LinkedIn, but I come from a corporate marketing background. And part of that is doing different types of events. Uh, I was doing webinars before webinars were cool. <laughs> and now that we're in this new world of oh, so many things happening virtually, um, I've been doing a lot more virtual events, but not at the depth and, and extent as Christopher. So you go much deeper into Zoom than I do. That's something you've helped people with as well, isn't it? Hosting their events through Zoom. It is. And, you know, I, I am the guide to the side. So while they are delivering their message, I'm backstage making sure everything runs smoothly. And, you know, it's one of those things, much like your Friday VIP sessions, there will be an occasion where you may say, Christopher, would you explain this? And I will pop on and explain that or cover that topic. And it is one of those things when done well, it looks seamless. Meaning you may have private chat at me. Hey, mm -hmm. I need to go and get my hot pocket out of the microwave. Right. Maybe that has happened before. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know for sure. <laughs> this is a theoretical example. And when that happens, I will step, I will step in and I will be the interstitial holder of space. Hmm. Very good. And I just private messaged you something in chat to ask you if you can pull up one of the banners that supports Q&A. Since our, it's our first time doing this, um, and actually, Christopher, right now, you're not serving just as a co-host or as a, uh, how do we describe this? As a, Not as a, you're a co-host and a guest today. Typically, you would be just a co-host, so you wouldn't be on screen talking as I'm asking you to do things in the private chat. So I just private chat and, and I messaged Christopher and I said, can you please share the comment below banner? So Christopher, if you click on, can you see my banners? I think you can see banners. There you go. There you go. And what I try to do with my banners is I, I put them in order of how I'm going to show them on the show. So I have the welcome is this thing on first, comment below is second. Um, I keep the third one is did you enjoy this discussion? We'll talk about that at the end of it. Um, but I try to keep them in order. And then depending on what the tips are that are being shared, I may type in additional items in there. So that is that something you could help with as well? If, you know, listening for the takeaways and putting them up on screen? Absolutely. And okay. so one of the things I would go over with you as a client, we would go through a run of show. Okay. How do you want this to flow? Now, the conversation will be free-flowing and unscripted and unrehearsed, but there may be bullet points you want to hit. Mm -hmm. And at, hey, at the 20-minute mark, this is where I want to make that transition. If you're okay. not there yet, I can send you a private message. Did you want to go long on this segment or did you want to transition? Mm -hmm. And you would make that call. And if you say transition, it's like, all right, great. Here's that next bit of information and share that on the screen. Okay. That's good to know. So you could help to keep me to timeline if I'm rambling or maybe my guest is rambling. Um, 
not the guest ramble, but sometimes people get very enthusiastic about talking about a su subject. And and I usually tell people in the, in the pre-show, we'll talk until about 9.35-ish or the 35-minute mark, and then we'll move into Q&A. Um, and at that point, you know, I'll say, you know, what I'd like to do now is shift gear. So if you hear me saying, what I'd like to do now is shift gears and see if our audience has any questions, Christopher, then you would pull up the comment below to ask a question. So I could tell you that in our pre-show re review run of show. And then at this point, um, as the host, I will also tell my audience what is appearing up on screen because I find that you need to tell people and tell people again and remind people and give them permission, not just put it up on screen once and not just say it once. Um, and I actually like to keep the ticker running, Christopher. So if you could keep my ticker running, um, because of the fact that someone may have just popped on and they didn't hear me say, hey, if you have a question or if you have not yet added a comment into the live stream, please comment below so that we know that you're watching. And Christopher, I will have you look through the comments right now. If there's any comments that have been added in that we have not yet pulled up on screen, go ahead and pull them up on screen. And as the host, I can keep on vamping and going through um, and talking about what, what needs to be talked about. There's the playback link from Sarah. If you go on LinkedIn, I believe the link will be clickable um, to watch the playback of that show. So thank you, Sarah, for, for doing that. All right, Christopher. So we've talked about getting you added in through the admin settings um, as a co-host. We've talked about reviewing the run of show so you know what the expectations are in terms of what I want you to do and help me to share on screen. We've talked about the ability to chat with one another using the private chat function. And we've also talked about the fact that I think you can see everything I can see as a host. You can see comments, you can see banners, you can see brand, you can see private chat. Um, what am I missing? Uh, that's... You're not missing anything. What I would add to that or reiterate is as co-host, um, the ability and the, if the co-host is staying behind the scenes, then mm -hmm. I think there's an obligation to listen attentively to see how you can add something of benefit to the broadcast. Hmm. So, so you just made me think of something else too, Christopher. As a co-host, when you joined the stream yard, you would be in, I like to call it the green room. Like you're in the waiting room area, but you're not up on screen. Mm -hmm. Typically as a co-host, that's where you would sit and that's where you would be. And you can hear, I believe all the conversation and dialogue inside the live stream, the live environment, not the playback 30 seconds later. So you can see it all inside the live environment. So you can hear what we're saying. You can see the private chat, but you're in there. But let's say I lose my Wi-Fi access and I suddenly. And now I can step in seamlessly and keep the broadcast going. So while Brenda is checking on the hot pocket that just beeped in the microwave, I wonder what today's flavor is. Anyway, we'll keep going. And when Brenda returns, then we'll resume the conversation. At this point, some of the things that have been covered today, if you add in a co-host, they will have access to the same things that you do. What I would recommend is going over with them beforehand what you want them to cover, when, and even a why. If you're working with an organization, make sure that you have that organization's website pull it up on one of the tabs so that you can access their resources. Another good practice is a site like Audible or Amazon or your favorite book reseller so that any books that are mentioned can be uh, can also be shared in the chat. Keep an eye on the chat and then be, be listening so that you can add something in. And then when the host miraculously suddenly reappears, then you can hand things back over. And now we'll resume the broadcast. So Christopher, I have one other question for you. Um, in my StreamYard view, underneath my video pane, 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, eight of them. I don't know, six or eight of them. I can't count right now. Um, can you change the video view? So can you make, I want your video to be the hero and mine to be the little one. Can you do that? Okay. And if we had three people, I know there's a way that we could move panels around. Hey, if anybody's watching right now, if you want to join us real quick in the stream yard so we can check this, message me on LinkedIn. We do have to be first level connections. I'm only going to invite someone that I know. I'm not going to invite a complete stranger off the street. But if you know me and you want to come in so we can test this out, because I want to see if you have the ability to move people around if there are more than two people in the stream yard. It's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute to do this, Christopher, because of the fact that the stream takes about 30 seconds to get to the live and then people hear it. And then I'm going to give it a couple more seconds to see if someone messages me on LinkedIn. And then if so, I'll, I'll, I'll message you back with the link to join the stream yard so we can test this out. And again, if you know me, if we're first level connections, if you want to join us in the stream yard, just we'll take about a minute or two, please message me on LinkedIn and I'll send you the stream yard code and you can come up and join us and, and help to demonstrate this. So right now in stream yard, um, can you can you show me navigate through the different types of video panes that are at the bottom, Christopher, and tell me like in what cases you would use each of those if you could. All right, absolutely. So, and <clears throat> pardon me, let me do this. One of the things that you can do in StreamYard when both of us are up on screen, if you drag, you can switch places. So right now we're in the, uh, as you described it, the hero layout. Uh, the first layout there would be solo. Now this is just just me, Brenda. You're still part of the part of the stream, okay? The second tab, cropped layout. Hmm. Further cropped, one and many, and again we can drag people to move them in and out of that spot. And this is something to keep in mind that I would take a look at uh, as the backstage person, depending on how we had talked about it for the video editing. So if you want to be in Zoom parlance, spotlit for your duration, for your talk, then all right, that would be a, a solo for your part of the presentation. And once your presentation was done, bringing it back so that there will be a conversation. Now, the other option, it could be one person and sharing a screen or two people and sharing a screen on the side. We have the ability, if we are sharing a screen, to be at the bottom of it. So now we are side by side on the bottom of this. Uh, can you pull up your website? Because it's uh, so we can get rid of that mirroring effect so we can see what a website, just like a single website looks like in the background there. And Absolutely. then did you also notice I made a typo and it wasn't intentional, but I did make a typo in my banner, Christopher. Can you, as a co-host, fix my typo for me? Absolutely. Uh, and let me remove this. And tell us what you're doing as you do it. This is like total Wizard of Oz behind the curtains. So, and this is it's a banner. All right. It's, it's seriously guys. It's like, it, it's mind boggling when you're trying to talk and do the stuff and come across coherent. It's like a workout for your brain. Remember in Toastmasters, Christopher, we would always talk about um, table topics. And I always say it was, it flexes that little muscle in your brain that, that forces you to think on your feet. When you're hosting stream yards, it's the same way. You're trying to do all these different things and you're your your brain muscles start firing all these neurons to keep things moving along and keep the show moving smoothly. So under banners, I think it's the very last banner at the bottom. Did you fix it? There you go. Look at that. So you could help with that too, because that's something sometimes I have typos. Yvonne Kusher is always catching me when I have typos, especially in my voice to text posts. You could help with that too. So you could help to keep things kind of flowing and keep things accurate up on screen too. Absolutely. Yeah. And you see, the, the interesting thing is the banner has to be taken down before it can be edited. Hmm. Good point. All right. So I don't see any takers. That's OK. Um, but we did see that you have the ability to drag and move videos around. Mm -hmm. And that's something I as a host might say, make 
Jean the hero, and then you would know that means make her full screen. Um, or I might say switch to banner, you know, and you would you would see that coming through then the private chat, and then you'd have the ability to do so. Um, Absolutely. Anything else, Christopher, before we start to wind down our, our talk today? No, that's it. I mean, I, I would add to that. So if if you were a if you have a sponsor, sponsor's message plays at two minutes and 30 seconds in. Social Media Pie is sponsored in part by Traverse City Pie Company. Play that and then resume the broadcast. So videos, banners, anything that is uh, desirous of being played, the co-host backstage can play it. Okay. Good to know. And I wasn't even aware you could do the videos at the bottom I don't think I've ever used that before. I think I've only used the videos on the left-hand side. So I'm I'm learning new things just, and this is such a great thing to do today because I'm learning new things about how to do the show just based on having you on and seeing you demonstrate. Um, Christopher, as we start to wind down our time together, and that's one of my verbal cues. So if you were my co-host, and as I say, as we start to wind down together, that's my cue to pull up the person's URL. And I also pull up a screen share of their profile. Um, I want to ask you, Christopher, are you open to connecting with people on LinkedIn or what are your preferences there? I am, but if, and only if there's a personal note attached because, well, I studied at the Brenda Miller school of LinkedIn knowledge. And that is the best way to make a connection by making it personal, including a note. And because I'm in creator mode, people have to click on the more, and then personalize the invite. Good to know. And a lot of people don't know that they there is a way to personalize or they might be sending an invitation from the mobile app and they don't see that the option exists. So just to add on to that, to remind you, Christopher, and others that are watching, if you do get um, a blind invitation, that just means an invitation without any context, there's no personal note attached to it. I always recommend, you know, look at the profile. If it fits within your target audience criteria, geography, industry, things like that, um, and you're not sure if you want to accept it, you can message them back. Hey, Christopher, thanks for the invite. What prompted you to reach out to me? Or hi, um, Nicole, thanks for the invite. Have we met? Like some type of a, you want to get them talking. You can use that as a prompt coming back. Or you may just accept the invitation and say, thanks, Heidi, for sending me an invite to connect. I'm curious what brought you to my profile and then get the conversation started. But I love your point, Christopher, of you have creator mode enabled. So for those folks that are watching, if they're not following you, the default button will say connect or will say follow. I will say follow instead of connect. And they'll have to click on the more button instead to get that option to invite you to connect. All right. Um, so I'm, you know, thrilled to have you had you on. I'm glad you reached out and asked the question about the co-hosting on, on StreamYard. Um, there may be people that are watching this live or maybe sharing this video along that are in need of someone who can do what you do. How do we get a hold of you? And I'm going to have you show anything up on screen that you want to, whether it's your website or a link or a contact info form. I want you to show whatever you want to show if someone is interested in learning more about how to get a hold of you and learning more about your services. Well, thank you very much. The key way would be going to my LinkedIn company page and see, this is the verbal stall while I pull that out. <laughs> and you didn't know this was coming either. So I'm putting you on the spot <laughs> with this. So now it's a matter of the speed of my internet combined with knowing what my, you know, LinkedIn URL company page is and bringing that up. And now when I do this, do I have to stop my screen share for you to do that? Yes. Okay. So let me click on stop screen. Okay. There we go. And now if I add to stream, and now you should see my LinkedIn company page. And this would be where you could get a hold of me and we could talk about adding a co-host to your StreamYard event and or helping with your next virtual event. Okay. And I think I may have a banner. And none of this is rehearsed, guys. And this is um, 
normally Christopher as a co-host would have a run of show that we would have reviewed beforehand. He would know what's in the banners because he would have uploaded it. Um, Christopher, I have also actually Sarah has also uploaded a banner that has your company page URL. So could you remove your personal banner and then pull up your company banner as well? Absolutely. And that is. And the tricky part about this, too, is you're doing that, Christopher, is you you were trying to talk and share your screen and now you're trying to go back to the banners as, as a co-host. You normally wouldn't be up on screen so you can't see what you need to it's it's kind of like you're going with a blindfold trying to figure out where the banners are you have to remove the screen share first um in order to go back into there so um but all of this is a learning experience we are making no mistakes are we today christopher we are having Not learning one. experiences <laughs> exactly and we'll see at you may have heard a slight bit of panic. Okay, wait, there was no panic. We're having I didn't hear panic. I heard, I heard calm, clear communications. That's what I heard. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So one final thing I'm doing right now in the background is I have created an outro video with an updated image in the background with Christopher's URL. I'm going to remind our audience, pull up your phones right now. If you're not yet connected with Christopher, I'm going to give you an easy way to do so. You'll What you'll do is you'll hold your, your camera over the QR code that will appear in just a moment. And on your phone, that will take you to Christopher's LinkedIn profile. When you're on that profile from the LinkedIn mobile app, you're going to click on the more button. And underneath that more drop down, you're going to see a few different options one of which will be personalized invite. And then in there, you want to invite Christopher to connect with you and um, let him know that you saw him on Brenda's LinkedIn Live today. Make sure that you include that context in there. Now, I downloaded this from Canva. It's an MP4. It's a pretty large file. And I'm vamping as I'm doing this. That's why I'm kind of like stretching out what I'm saying because it's filling the space. And I just uploaded it in there. It's saying 34 seconds. So I think this is the right video on here. Um, with all of that said, Christopher, thank you so much. This was delightful. It was a good learning experience. I'm feeling more informed. And I hope our audience did as well. Thank you so much, Christopher, for joining today. A pleasure as always. All right, Christopher, I'm going to have you handle pulling up the outro video. And then I will see you all later on LinkedIn. And it's the one that's called QR Meller Marketing YouTube under the loop. So under the there video clips, see that under there? Okay, there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all.